So here's some more examples of open-ended questions. What happened at the meeting, not just were you at the meeting? Why did he react that way instead of how did he react? You could say, I don't know, angrily. Um, how was the party? Tell me what happened next. Describe the circumstances. All of these words are pretty much the key to open questions. Okay, so open questions are good for developing an open conversation. What did you get up to um, on vacation? Finding out more detail, obviously, and finding out other person's opinion or issues. What do you think about those changes? Closed questions, they do have their purpose. They are good for testing your understanding or the other person's. So if I get this, will I get this? Very simple, yes or no. It's also good for concluding a discussion or making a decision, because you don't want multiple options, op options Excuse me, when you're trying to conclude. Frame setting, are you happy with the service from your bank? Or a misplaced closed question, on the other hand, can kill the conversation and lead to kind of awkward silences. I'm sure we've experienced that in just day-to-day <coughs> -day conversations with different people. And this is really great for teachers, checking for understanding. Is everyone in um, understanding of what we just learned about? Yes or no? You know what I mean? We're, as teachers, we're not going to have time to tell me how you feel about this topic. We're not always going to have time for that. So these can be really great for checking for understanding. So now we're going to get into other types of questions. The first, top, the first kind is funnel questions. And Erin, would you read this first paragraph for us, please? Actually, and actually, this whole slide, please. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> this technique involves starting with general questions and then homing in on a point in each answer, and asking more and more detail at each level. It's often used by detectives taking a statement from a witness. How many people were involved in the fight? About ten. Were they kids or adults? Mostly kids. What sort of ages were they? About 14 or 15. Were any of them wearing anything distinctive? Yes, several of them had red baseball caps on. Can you remember if there was a logo on any of the caps? Now come to mention it, yes, I remember seeing a big letter N. So when you guys hear the word funnel, what do you, what picture do you get in your mind? A funnel. A Narr funnel. Yeah, narrowing down. Okay, yeah. so you start exactly. with a general question, and this can be extremely effective for finding out what our students are understanding. And just in general, if you want to know more about something, you hone in on a topic that's general, and it slowly gets narrower and narrower, right? And you're able to get more out of them. More on funnel questions. Using this technique, the detective has helped the witness relive the scene in their minds and they're, re they're recollecting it, and gradually focus on using Sorry, and gradually focus on a useful detail. Perhaps he'll be able to identify young men wearing a hat like this from CCTV footage. It is unlikely he would have got this information if he simply asked an open question such as, are there any details you can give me about what you saw? And a tip, when using funnel questioning, you start with the closed questions, and as you progress through the tunnel, start using more and more open questions, and it gives them the chance to give you more and more detail. Um, funnel questions are good, like we talked about before, finding out more detail and gaining the interest or increasing the confidence of the person you're speaking with. Have you used the IT help desk? Did they solve your problem? What was the attitude of the person who took your call? Broad to specific. Juana, do you want to read this one? Sure. The first paragraph? Yes. Um, probing questions. Asking probing questions is another strategy for finding out more detail. Sometimes it's as simple as asking a respondent for an example to help you understand the statement that they have made. At other times, you need additional information for clarification. When do you need this report by, and do you want to see a draft before I give you my final version, or to investigate whether there is proof for what has been said? How do you know that the new database can't be used by the sales force? An effective way of probing is to use the five whys method, which can help you quickly get to the root of a problem. 
Did I read this one too? No, it's a page oh, okay. Yeah. So a tip for using probing questions would be to use questions that include the word exactly, gives you more definite answers. So example, what exactly do you mean by fast track? Who exactly wanted this report? Probing questions are good for many things. They're good for gaining clarification, specifics, to ensure you have the whole story. They're also good at drawing information out of people who are trying to avoid telling you something. So again, and you can go the next slide. Okay. Um, what's great about probing questions also is if the students, especially Mike, I'm sure you get this a lot, I don't get math. I don't understand it. Could you just say, what don't you understand about division? That's not helpful. They would say, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you say, what exactly is your problem? Where exactly are you getting confused? So exactly is an extremely important word to use in questioning skills to gain really, really great answers from whoever you're talking to. I would also say conflict re resolution in classrooms when there's kids, because it happens all the time. Kids fight them in the playground. They come mm -hmm. in. They want to tattle. They're all mad. Mm -hmm. And getting to using funneling questions mm -hmm. and using probing questions really gets to the bottom of it. Yeah. I use that with my own kids, and eventually I find out the truth. Yeah. You know, because eventually they can't hide it. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. Yes, the right question. Yeah. And do you want to take it and start reading about leading questions? I'll take it. You can read. Why don't we split it up? Why don't you read the first two? Okay. Leading questions try to lead the respondent to your way of thinking. They can do this in several ways. With an assumption. How late do you think that the project will deliver? This assumes that the project will certainly not be completed on time. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Do you have anything you want to say? Um, Why'd you say? Mm -hmm. Well, it reminds me of being in court. I just read a book called Monster, and you know, leading the witness. You know, you try and get them to say a certain answer. As a, so, that's what it reminds me of. Exactly. Yeah. How can that though be helpful as a teacher? Well, you can kind of get them to more quickly give you an answer, maybe. Well, this kind of reminds me of um, the S words. Yeah. Oh. Kind of scaffolding, because you're leading them, and you're, you're not saying, this is the answer, but you're cueing them in on what the appropriate answer is. Erin, do you want to take the next two? Mm -hmm. 